I'd like to begin our study of voting methods with an example. The 1992 presidential election results in Texas. You may, may remember that year that there were three candidates in the race. George Bush, that was the first George Bush, Bill Clinton, and Ross Perot. Bush got 40.7%, Clinton got 37.2%, and Ross Perot got 22.1%. So according to the rules, George Bush won the election. And the thing to notice here is that uh, he only got a little over 40% of the vote, which means that nearly 60% of the people voted against him. And this shows that the results of an election can depend not only on the votes that are cast, but also on the method that is used to decide the winner. Well, it is clear that when we have only two candidates, the everyone agrees what needs to be done, and namely, whoever gets the most votes will win. Where we have a problem is when there are more than two candidates. Several methods have been devised and are in use, and that's what I want to tell you about right now. First method is the one you're probably most familiar with. Uh, it's called the plurality method, and this is the method that is used for our most of our uh, political elections, and it is the simplest method. Uh, basically, whoever gets the most votes wins the election. And we've already seen how uh, we can get a peculiar result that way. Another uh, result, in 1998, the governor's race in Minnesota featured two mainstream candidates, a Republican and a Democrat, and they split about 63% of the vote. Uh, but the other candidate, the alternative candidate whose name was Jesse Ventura, um, came up with 37% of the vote and won the race. And so the result was that uh, the state of Minnesota had Jesse Ventura as their governor for the next four years. Uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, he was a former professional wrestler. Okay, the next method that I want to tell you about is known as the board account. Uh, under this method, the voters rank all of the candidates according to their preferences and then points are assigned based on those preferences. So for example, with three candidates in the race, then favorite candidate would get three points, the next would get two, and the least favorite would get one point. Board account is actually in use in ranking college sports teams if you follow football or basketball, then you know that the weekly rankings uh, come out and they're based on the board account um, rankings of the teams that are involved. So I want to do an example of uh, a board account. Uh, usually with board account, because there's a fair amount of data, the uh, results are organized in a preference table. And so that's what we're going to look at here next. So let's say we have four candidates in a race. And we'll say those candidates are 
A, B, C, and D. And here is the preference table for the election. So the next thing I want to do is tell you about how to read a table like this. The votes are along the top. The preferences are on the side. So let's look at just this first column here. This six here says that there were six voters with the same preference, and those preferences were C, first preference, then A, and then B, and then D. So the next column, the voters, those seven voters preferred A first, and then C, and then B, and then D, and so on. The next five preferred C first, and then D, B, A, and so on. So what we need to do to analyze a table like this is to assign the points, in this case, four points for first place, three points for second, two points for third, and one point for fourth. Um, and then add up the total number of points, and whoever has the most points will win. So let's take a look at A. We look at the top row in A. A has 7 plus 3, or a total of 10, first place votes. Okay, so we uh, multiply that 10 by 4, and we get a total of 40 points for the first preference votes. In the second row, we have 6, 9 is 15, and 3 is 18. So we have 18, 3 points for each second preference vote, so that's a total of 54. A has no third preference votes, and 5 fourth preference votes, so 1 point for the fourth preference votes, total of 5. We add them up, we get 99 points for A. Okay, let's do the same thing for B. Okay, in the top row, we see nine first preference votes for B. Multiply that by four, get 36. B has no second preference votes. In the third row, we have six plus seven is 13, 18, 21 third preference votes. We multiply that by 2 and get 42. And then there are three fourth preference votes for B. And so the total for B is 81. Okay, we do the same thing for C and D. And we get the totals for C and D are 83 and 67. And so we see that A wins this election by board account. Okay, and one thing that um, might strike you if you look closely at the preference table, if you just look at first preference votes, C has more first preference votes. C has 11 first preference votes, only 10 for A. Okay, so if we were going on uh, plurality, then C would win the election. But on board account, it's really not all that close. A with 99 and C with 83.